Hello guys. So one thing that you're going to need to do and learn how to do is to work with your data sets to completely know how to manipulate them to do what you need them to do. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is graph it. And so the way that we do that first is we're going to take our time column, which if I highlight this here, it says time. You can also make it slightly bigger if you'd like so you can see all those things, absorbance and so on. The absorbance column, again, we're going to ignore, but it would be important if maybe the more absorptivity was off, these numbers don't look correct. You can always use your absorbance to find what you need. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight this time column, and then depending on if you have a Mac or a Windows, you're gonna hit Control for Windows, or Command, that fun little symbol uh, for Mac, and you're gonna hit that and then click on this third column and this is again our concentration right because when you guys have been talking about rate laws you've been comparing concentration to time whether it's the natural log of the concentration one over you've been doing this and so I'm gonna go to insert and I'm gonna go and I see a bunch of recommended charts and in Windows you'll also see it has a chart section and you're gonna flick through and you're gonna find scatter for those who have Windows because this isn't quite there but for people who have a Mac you're gonna look for those dots and you're just gonna click on the dots Voila, we've got a chart. Okay, this is fine, but I've noticed in my chart that I've got quite a few data points at the end that I don't really need. And to be honest, when I take the natural log and one over the concentration to see which rate order it is with respect to crystal violet in this case, um, I don't really want to be confused by extra things. And so when I zoom in here, I can see that the ones that really are kind of not necessary they're all very similar in order they're not changing by a lot is anything past 140 seconds so if i ooh, i zoomed out way too much but if i go down here and click 100 and then you go down go here and i said okay so like 140 so 138 and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to click back on my data scroll down and i'm going to hike this up to 140. And then I'm going to take this one and hike this up to one, 138, 140. And now you can see on my chart, it now doesn't have any of those extra data points. I'm going to click on this axis. I'm going to hit format. I'm going to hit format pane. And I'm going to see the minimum is zero. I want that. That's fine. But I'm going to see my maximum is 160. And like we said, 140 seems about right to us. And now we've got a pretty good looking chart. The next thing I'm going to do is chart design. There's a few things you can add chart elements, trend line being one that you'll want to do, but more importantly, you can also do a quick layout. And for a quick layout, I'm gonna pick the one that defines that, that F of X in there means that it's gonna give me, and I'm gonna erase this legend here, don't need it, but it's, that F of X means it's gonna give me the equation of the line. And later, when you're looking for that K observation, this is gonna be very important because we need to know the slope. Now, a couple of eagle eyes are going to say to me, is that linear? Mm, doesn't look linear to me, so it means it's probably not, um, probably not zero order, right? Because if we label our axes here, this is the concentration of CV, and this is over time. And so we know that whenever we have concentration versus time, that's zero order, and in this case, we don't see this lining up to be linear. So you're gonna take this concentration and you're gonna hit in this here, I'm, I'm gonna label this LN of CV and hit enter. And then I'm gonna hit equals, whoop, equals, and I'm gonna take the natural log and I'm gonna hit on my concentration number, close that out in the parentheses, hit equal and then I'm gonna drag this down. And now look, I've got more data that I can then compare to time, graph, and do the exact same thing I've just done. So hopefully this has given you a good way to understand how to manage your data and also how to add that linear trend line. Please be sure to watch this video again if you need to revisit it to understand how to do this, and also be sure to ask your TA. Thanks so much.